In this video, we're going to learn about the JavaScript set timeout method. The set timeout method allows you to set a timer and then execute a function at the end of that timer. To help us better understand the set timeout method, we'll explore the function itself and also build a sample application. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. The sample application that we're going to build is really simple. It has two buttons, a change color and a cancel. Clicking change color will disable the button and start a timer. When that timer finishes, the button will be re-enabled and the color over here will change to blue inside the box. If we click it a second time, it's also going to disable the button again and then the color will change back to white. However, if we go ahead and click change color and then click cancel, that will cancel the timer and the color will not change. Before we build this sample application, let's go ahead and understand how the setTimeout function works. The setTimeout function is a built-in function inside JavaScript, and the function takes in several parameters. One of the parameters is the function that you want to execute. The next parameter is the delay, which is in milliseconds, and then arguments, which can be passed into the function that you're going to be calling. Let's go ahead and try the set timeout method. We're going to try it inside of Chrome. So go ahead and click on the three dots, click on more tools, click on developer tools. And then once this is open, go ahead and select the console. From the console, we can go ahead and play around with JavaScript. So we can use the alert, for example, over here. And I'm just going to type hello. So this is a method that I want to call on a timer. When I call alert, it automatically executes right away. And we get this message at the top of our screen that says hello. But let's go ahead and do that on a delay. So we're going to use set timeout again over here. And inside set timeout, what we're going to do is the first parameter over here is going to be a function. So let's go ahead and pass alert in. So alerts being passed in, but notice I'm not adding the parentheses so because I'm not executing it right away. So we can go ahead and pass alert in. Then we have to give it a delay. And that delay is in milliseconds. So since it's in milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. So let's go ahead and do a delay of two seconds. So two seconds would be 2000. And then we can go ahead and write the message. Hi, how are you? Go ahead and close that. Now when I hit enter, it's going to execute that JavaScript, start the timer, and when the timer finishes, it's going to call alert and we'll see our message after two seconds over here. So let's go ahead and do that same example here in Visual Studio Code. So I've opened Visual Studio Code over here on my left and on my right, I got my Chrome open. Now, one of the extensions that I have installed inside Chrome is called Live Server. So that's going to allow me to make changes over here and have them automatically updated in my Chrome. So inside Visual Studio over here, let's go ahead and add an index.html. And then if you push exclamation mark and then a tab like that, you're going to get this template created for you automatically for the HTML. Then what we're going to do is we'll also create an index.js where we'll do all our JavaScript inside the index.html over here. Let's just go back here and we're just going to add an src is equal to index.js and save that. Then right click on index.html and say open with live server. It'll then open up a tab inside of your Chrome or default browser. Then what we can do inside of our HTML over here, let's go ahead and put an H1 and we can just put a title in. I'm going to call it set timeout, click save. And then what you're going to notice is that it's automatically updating inside of Chrome. So anytime we make a change over here, it'll automatically update. The next thing we'll do is we'll make sure that our JavaScript is working. So inside Chrome over here, let's go open our developer tools again, hit the three dots, go to more tools, and then go to developer tools. Make sure you have your console open over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to our index.js and just go ahead and type console.log and just put hello or any text just to double check that it appears over here. If it does, then we're good to go. Let's go ahead and do one more example with said timeout before we build that little app over there. So let's go ahead and create a function and we're going to call it do something and the do something method will go ahead and call a console.log and it will just print out a message that says this is delayed. Now if we call this method right away, of course, that's not going to be delayed, but we can test that it works and we can see that it is printing it out on the screen. But if you want to delay it, we use set timeout. We give it the method, but we don't execute the method with parentheses. We just call do something that way. 
and then we give it a delay. Now the delay is in milliseconds. That means 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. So if we put 2000 over here, that is two seconds. If we save that, we'll notice the message doesn't appear right away, but after two seconds, it does. Well, let's go ahead and build our sample application. We're gonna start with the HTML first. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add that box that we had on the other screen over here and our buttons. So after the H1 that we've added over here, let's go ahead and add a div. This div over here is gonna contain our two buttons. These buttons are also gonna have identifiers. So let's go ahead and add the identifier for the first button called change color button. And then the text will be change color. Click save and we'll just add a second button over there and we'll give it an ID. We're gonna call it cancel change color. Then the text is just gonna be cancel or you can make it whatever you like. And then after this div over here that we're adding, let's go ahead and just add another div. And this is gonna be the box that changes color. Then we'll give it an identifier of box. One last thing you can do inside the HTML is style our application. It's always much more fun to work with an application that looks nice. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and just style our box that we have. The box is a div on the screen that you currently cannot see. If we look at the sample application over here, we can see this box over here. So let's go ahead and add that box so that we can actually see it. We're gonna go ahead and give it a width. So we're selecting it by its identifier over here. And we'll just give it a width of 400 pixels and a height of 400 pixels. Then so that we can actually see this thing on the screen, let's give it a border. We'll do one pixel solid and black. Click save. Now you can see the outline over here and we'll just close the console for now. Then to separate it from the buttons a little bit, we're just going to give it a margin top of one pixel. And then this one over here had a nice shadow around it. So we're going to do, is we're going to use a box shadow and we're going to give it position it with five pixels and five pixels offset with a 20 pixel blur. And we'll just use the color black. Now, one last thing that we can do is we can take the body over here and we're just going to center everything inside it. We're going to use something a little bit more advanced called flex. So we're going to use a display of flex and a flex direction of column. If you'd like to learn a fun way to learn flex, check out my flex box froggy video, which is an awesome game that you can play to learn Flexbox. Now, as soon as we click save over here and we put center, everything will be centered on the screen. Now this margin top over here, I meant that to be 10 pixels because I wanted just a little bit of a gap between there and there. Click save and there we are. Now we can go ahead and start to implement our JavaScript. So let's go to our index.js over here and we can just clear everything out because we don't need any of that. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to get a reference to our change color and our cancel buttons over here and our box. So at the top of our screen over here, all we have to do is define some variables and we're going to define a change color button and we're going to make that equal to document dot get element by ID. Now the identifier for our button is over here, change color button. So just go ahead, copy that, paste that in over here and we'll do the same thing for our cancel change color and the variable name will be the same anyway. So we're just going to paste that over there, paste that over there. And the last thing we want to get is our box. So we'll define a const box is equal to document uh, get element by ID and pass in the box. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll add our click event for the change color button over here. So we're going to go ahead and use our change color button call add event listener. We're going to add a click event and that click event is going to take in a function. The function that we're going to pass in will be called on change color click. We'll go ahead and create that function. So we'll call this function on change color click. It's not going to take any parameters in and what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and create our timeout. So we're going to call set timeout. Set timeout is going to go ahead and call a method called change color that doesn't exist just yet. And we're going to do this after two seconds. So that's 2000 milliseconds. Remember that 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. And lastly, we'll go ahead and we'll disable our button. So we'll get the change color button. 
and we'll go ahead and set disabled equal to true. To make sure that everything is working correctly, let's go ahead and define our change color function. And we're not gonna do anything just yet inside it. So let's go inside our Chrome over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go to the more tools, go to developer tools and make sure the console tab is open. And we're gonna check that we don't have any errors. So go ahead and save it. Then we're gonna click change color. We'll see that our button's disabled and it remains disabled because we haven't enabled it again after the timer has fired. We can go ahead and enable our button over here inside change color to check that our timer is firing as it should. So we can go ahead, copy this over here and set it to false, save it. And now when we go ahead and click change color, it's going to be disabled for two seconds and then enabled. Inside the change color method, which gets executed after the timer finishes, now we can go ahead and change our box color. So we're going to select our box over here, which is represented by this. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the background color. So we'll just do style box.style.background color. And we're gonna check if the color is equal to blue, we're gonna go ahead and set the color to white. So we'll just go ahead and say box dot style again, and then dot background color is equal to white. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and set the color to blue. So we can simply just go ahead, copy this line over here, and then paste it there and change that to blue. If we're already blue, go ahead and set the color to white. If it's not blue, then set the color to blue for the box. So let's go ahead and try that out. We'll click change color, two seconds will go by, and then our box will change to blue. Let's do that again, click that button one more time. Two seconds later, the color changes to white. Now we can go ahead and implement our cancel functionality. So we wanna be able to cancel the timer, but how do we do that? Well, if we take a look at the documentation over here, we'll see that every single timer that you create returns a timeout ID. That ID can then be used to identify the timer and then cancel it. There's a special function called clear timeout, which will cancel our timeout. So this is how you do it. All you have to do is call clear timeout and pass in the identifier of the timer. Let's go ahead and start by getting that timer identifier. So we're gonna do over here, we're just gonna define a variable and we'll define it as a let. We'll call it timer ID and we'll set it to zero. Then when we go ahead and call set timeout, that's gonna return a timer ID. So we can assign the timer ID to the value that we get back. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our cancel change color click event. So we're gonna add an event listener and we'll add a click event listener. And we're gonna call this method on cancel change color click. And we'll define that over here with our functions. So I'm gonna put it below the on change color click, but it can go anywhere with the functions. We'll call it function on cancel click. So you can just copy the name over here, put it there, it doesn't take any parameters in. And now we get to go ahead and call that method clear timeout. So clear timeout, we have to give it the identifier. So that's the one we get back from our set timeout. We'll pass in that ID over there. And when that happens, we also want to go ahead and re-enable our button. So we'll get our change color button and we'll go ahead and set the, the disabled property to false, which will enable the button. Let's go ahead and try that out. If we click on the change color and then quickly click cancel, we're going to see the button becomes re-enabled and the color doesn't change. So let's click change color, wait two seconds, the color changes blue. Now click change color again, click cancel quickly, and you can see that it is actually canceling the timer. And when the timer gets canceled, it no longer changes the background of our box color over here. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.